Okay, this is Luton, and today we're looking at Operation Firestorm. Now, Operation Firestorm was requested to me by people to do another little look at how to attack it. Um, I am going to do some defense as well, but first let's just take a look at the attacking. Now, I'm going to pick up the jet first, just so we can have a little overview of the entire map. Now, there's several key things that is worth remembering from defense and attack uh, perspectives. So first of all, now as we come over here, you can see this hill here that we're flying right over, this hill right here. And that hill tends to be camped out by snipers and all sorts of people like that. But you really don't want to do that. It's only going to make the game go on and on. It's not really going to achieve very much. Now where we want to really look at is all of these points coming up to here, but mainly this road. Now this road, whilst very open, is the most direct access to the main base and mainly also to A, and A is one that you want to really make the priority for the beginning of the map because you want to be able to come around and go into that base right there. So let's uh, get back on the ground. Now one thing I do want to point out, if you're in a very, very disparate situation, and this is just a bit of a bullet point, you can hop out of the jet you know, if you need to jump around from behind, and I've done that in a few maps before. I know it sacrifices the aircraft, but sometimes it is necessary if you've got a very, very hard camped team and you want to get in behind them. So let's just pick up a vehicle. See what we've got hanging around here. See if there are any vehicles, where are they? Uh, here we go. A little bit further ahead. Obviously parachuted out too far back. Okay, so we'll pick up a buggy. Now, or a growler. Um, but basically, the, f the thing that I usually do, tanks are great, and they're great for pounding into the base. But the main thing that I usually will do is pick up a growler, and off we go this way. Now this is, I'm going to cover a couple of different ways in. And the, the first base is usually the most tricky, really. Um, there are some aspects about the last on this one that's tricky, but... Uh, you know the first space is usually hardest so what we do is now this thing you've got to be careful of mines around this area because usually on this sort of section of the road here people have dropped mines down and so on and so on um, and of course all along that road as well you'll have people placing mines or C4 everything like that so it's worth being very careful so if you can as you come up here you know you can go all over onto this sort of area a little bit so you can kind of hug the left and you can go all across this area here and, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, I find you generally don't get much opposition. Now, you've got to be careful because, see, right here where we are, you can go out the combat zone. But as soon as you come over here, you're back in again. And this is generally where you want to hop out. Um, now, you can use the Growler as a defensive tool. But, I mean, you will be a sitting target, so bear that in mind. But if you want to place it here, have somebody stay on the LMG, that's good. But, basically, this is where you want to enter. Is this little area right here. And then we do have the infrastructure, superstructure, I should say, all around here. Um, one thing that I find, this is a very good spot to kind of sit and cover. You can tuck right in here and uh, people won't spot you. So you can cover very nicely A there. Um, it's quite a well-known spot, I guess. There's other little places that you can hide. I often sometimes will come over here. And I know you are a little bit exposed, but you'd be surprised when a target is armed how poorly people look for things and you can see you can sit kind of right under this thing here and you can easily sight the target there so that's two little points that you can watch um, if you have soloed up here and you want your team then the best thing to do is to come upstairs and again just sort of sit anywhere around here and you know that would be a great spawn point for your squad so A isn't really too difficult, um, it's only difficult if people make it difficult by taking too long to get up here. If you take too long to get up here then it means that the defence will get entrenched. So the first base on Operation Firestorm really is about speed. You need to move up here as quickly as you possibly can and get straight onto A. And the reason I say that is because A is very kind of close quarters. Um, I've seen guys, I can't get up here, you have to jump, but you, you get people stuck in here they're really they're getting the walls you know they'll, they'll sit all around here shotguns etc etc so you really want to get this one ASAP so let's just take this one now B is a completely different I'm gonna say it completely different kettle of fish it's a 
different color fish. Um, to get to B, I'm going to suicide and go back to the base rather than run it, okay? And we'll bring up some other vehicles. And you can assume anyway that you might have died. If you can, after you've got A, then obviously just push straight over to B, drop some smoke, try and pick it up, you know? So let's pick up a tank. Now, as I say, B is a little bit different because it's quite exposed. You know, they can get a lot of uh, defensive fire onto it. They can get C4, claymores, snipers, all sorts of things all around it. The worst thing that you really want is your team to be sitting back up here sniping. But that's probably going to happen because, you know, you can't really control your team. So it's going to happen. Um, a couple of primary targets for you in the tank are going to be this kind of infrastructure up here. You're going to want to look for snipers up in that thing. And you're also going to want to look for snipers above here. Um, destroying this building here and generally putting a bit of fire into it, that can be good. But if they've got it poorly defended, it can also be a good spawn point for attackers. So watch out for that one. As you come into this area with tanks, you're going to have a lot of fire from javelins, RPGs. You're going to watch for mines and, of course, enemy tanks as well. So that can be, you know, not that easy. But you really want to try and push across here with your vehicles. Something that I will often do is to kind of sit here. And, um, you know, you might think, well, okay, that's quite exposed, but this piece of ground, you'd be surprised how well um, it can defend you against. You can kind of move forward, you see, and, um, you know, forward and back, cover that area there. If you've got enemy tanks, you can sit here and you can cover people crossing the infrastructure. Your machine gunner will be able to cover people coming across here. And whilst we can't actually see B, um, you know, you can kind of generally be a good defense. That's the, f the first stage of attack, bear in mind, though. Not once it's really armed, it's more to just kind of try and secure the area a little bit. You can cause some confusion by uh, blowing things up or, you know, putting shells into this building here. Um, then perhaps, you know, depending on if your team have pushed up, you, you know, your gunner might jump out or such and go for the arm. I'm going to have to abandon my tank, which I don't really want to do, but... We'll just move up. Now again, this base, again, it's, it's not really complicated. You just have to kind of be aware, you know, use your cover well, you know, mark your targets, put some smoke down. Oh, I've got, <laughs> I don't have smoke. I've got uh, the explosive M320. I'll do that when I next suicide. So basically you just want to smoke it, smoke it and just rush it. There isn't really too much of a heavy, heavy tactic. There's not, you know, you just have to kind of improvise. One thing that I do find is this building right here can be very good because you can literally just sit and cover. And um, same goes, there's a lot of windows here where you can cover B. So, you know, and also something that I've said before, if you're covering something like this, don't stand with your face right against the window. Because if you stand with your face right against the window, you know, you'll be very, very visible. You're, you're a silhouette, okay? But if you stand back a little, like this, okay, you can still see the target. You can still see people coming in, but you will be less visible. So try to stand sort of just like this back a bit if you're covering and defending a base, okay? I'm just going to suicide again, and I'm going to take smoke on my gun because um, it's a really powerful tool that I use in rush games for covering myself, covering my team, and arming targets. So let's take M320 smoke. Okay, off we go. Now my tank is sadly gone, but we do have buggies and stuff. Now again, the next base, the next base can be a real tricky one. But again, I'm going to use the Growler, and usually what I would do is go back, backtrack a little bit. And again, it's all about the flanking, the whole of Battlefield is about flanking, especially Rush, because you want to get around them. Um, conquest, you see, you know, flanking on Conquest is all very well, but um, on Rush, it's so important because you need to get behind the objective, clear them out, and take the target, you know. So again, what I'll do is come up this road here, scream around the corner, and just usually drop it here and then that way you can enter this building from behind and if you do it quickly like if you're in the vehicle ready to move you can do it before they've really set up any kind of defense claim or c4 etc etc now a good thing to do is to have somebody move straight up here and then they can come over here go prone and you see now they will be able to help by covering and often you'll get people camped in this lower ground here and uh, the ground floor, first floor, and uh, generally this area. Watch out for that little shop over there, because that will also be a bad one. Just, you know, these buildings are horrible because people really will become just kind of entrenched. So you have to be careful for that. Um, you know, if you're a recon, set up a spawn point in this room here. Uh, that'll be helpful. 
but this this map is very very much about just moving quickly and sweeping clear sweeping clear um, you know this base I would say is very good to break out the shotguns because you're gonna have a lot of infantry in here you're gonna be you know they'll all be hidden in the dark you know a shotgun with a, a searchlight is probably gonna be quite good or a flashlight rather uh, can you imagine having a shotgun with a, a searchlight? <laughs> um, any of these rooms will do for having your recon points ready. Um, I would also watch out for this area because you see often what they will do is sit back in this corner here, gives them a very nice line of sight on A. Okay, it's quite an obvious position. This one as well, you see, it's very dark over here. So you can sit and see A perfectly. So just as a note, a defender, sit in this corner. <laughs> but um, yeah, check that corner. Okay. And usually what I will do to, to walk that corner um, as I enter, if I'm, if I'm going to go straight for the arm, I'll run up to this point, okay, it allows me to kind of have a half look on this, half look on that, and then usually what I'll do is throw a grenade straight out across there, and it will sort of ricochet back and clear out anyone in that back corner right there. Um, you don't often get them camped here, I mean, I, if it was me personally, I probably would go more like here, um, but most of the time people will be right back here in this corner that's what they tend to do so I usually put a grenade in that corner just to be careful um, you know I find again 50 50 whether there's somebody there or not so I always put a grenade there just to be on the safe side um, yeah so as you come in you wanted to kind of you know be peripherally aware peripherally that's not a word check the right check the left always check 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 okay ground floor first floor blah 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 grenade out you should see anyone in here as you come in and then just go for the arm okay so we'll arm that up and hopefully, hopefully whilst you're doing that, the rest of your team will be putting pressure in different areas. They'll also be perhaps in this room with you, helping you clear, okay, and you can move on to the next target. Now, often, usually what I'll do is literally just go straight across, okay? Um, if, if you've got enough confusion and, and destruction happening, um, it literally is nothing complicated. Um, but what I will probably do is put a piece of smoke out, sort of like that, just to kind of cover the route. And then I'll literally just go straight in on this door. Um, again, it, it really is just depends on how they're defending. You have to adapt to the battlefield. You have to adapt to what's happening. Okay, so if as you come out here, you know, again, checking all your corners. There may be people here. I've had this before. You have people prone, backed up in this corner here. They will be watching B, you see, because often guys will come in from that door there. So they'll be covering it from over here. You've got this horrible gantry up here. Again, so many positions that people can defend from. Okay, you can have guys up in here, look. Again, if you're a defender, okay, this is actually not a bad spot because look from here, you can perfectly sight B. Again, they've just got so many positions that people can be defending from, okay? You can have people up here. Look again, you can watch these doors. You can watch anything in here from this room up here. You can also watch this door, this door. You can watch multiple points. Um, so, you know, it really is just an adaptable thing, okay? There's no there's no set rule, unfortunately. You're not gonna be, I'm not going to be able to say like I did um, on the previous one on Grand Bazaar, this is 100% what you do, okay? You can't do that. You literally are going to have to improvise. Um, one thing though, of course, is you can try and destroy some of these facades with uh, tank shells or whatever. I would say this is probably the most direct route into B, and this is probably going to be the best way to stealth it, is this door right here, okay? So if, you've, if you're coming from A, Right? If you've planted A, then I would say just make a direct move across, try and clear it as you go. However, if you are making a direct attack on B, what you're going to want to do is bring your growler up here. Now often as well, rather than drive the vehicle right up to the base, they can often hear that and see that. Yeah. So what I would probably do is drive up here, ditch the growler around here. Right? Just, just jump out. And then you can, you can move kind of stealth up to here. Okay. So you're going to kind of come up to here. You maybe check, make sure it's clear. Maybe have a little look up at here, make sure there's nobody. Okay, move across, move across. And I'll probably move up to here, this corner. Okay, and again, you might go prone, just hear that. And often listen as well. Just listen, see if you can hear any gunfire, any movement. Okay, sticking your head slowly out like here is going to be pretty dangerous because they have tank spawns here. And, you know, you'll often get snipers sort of sat over there by that truck or the pallets and they'll be looking straight down this road okay so you be kind of careful for that but again probably what you could do is if you drop a piece of smoke just about here they're not going to necessarily know where that's came from okay come from even okay and you can just move straight across once you're into this room here again you could put a recon point down but they start beeping you know so 
but again often what I've done in a game is you can just come up like this and you'll be fairly well protected from both of the positions above because this guy up here won't see you and again if you're crouched and you're quiet this guy up here won't see you and neither will the guy in there okay and then often what I would do is just retreat back to this point and then that way you can see anyone come down the stairs here you can see anyone moving over here and you can generally kind of keep a good piece of cover and then again hopefully the rest of your team will be sitting over in positions here and here okay guys now we're going to want to move on to the final base and you're going to want to basically you know choose which target to go for first based on what the rest of the round has been like up until this point okay so if you've been having very uh, you know a very internal fight with a lot of people camping in the buildings with claymores c4 etc shotguns people you know camping down in the corners and so on and so on you're going to want to go for the b target first because it's an internal one and therefore you're going to want to attack the most difficult target when you have the most tickets if you've been having a very open game where there's been a lot of sniping, vehicle combat, etc, etc, then it's probable that A is going to be their favourite to defend. But again, you might have to adapt that as the round progresses. So let's have a look at B first, okay? Now, we don't have any fast-moving vehicles unless we've managed to keep them secured. What we will have is a tank. But um, I'm going to move up just on foot first so we can look at the central area up here. Now, it's not too bad you know from moving up through you've got a little bit of cover from these rocks and trees and things like that um, you can move over here to a quite directly but again the problem with moving through the center here is that when you get up to about halfway or just beyond you start to get this kind of open ground here this kind of open ground area and you can see it runs right across over towards a here you see all this open ground and this is what can make it very difficult to move up to um, you know, again, you could drop some smoke, you could drop some smoke over towards A and use that as a kind of countermeasure, sort of a, you know, a distraction tool. Um, if you come up to about here in line with this pillar, you want to kind of break through here. This is what will bring you to this door, okay? And that will be your entry to B. However, this is a very dangerous way to come into B. If you feel that um, A is their, you know, the one that they're defending the hardest, then, you know, it might be safe to enter that way, okay? Uh, I think... You could also, you know, obviously put sort of C4 or blow through holes in the buildings and enter that way. The problem with coming through this door is that, again, it can be very, it can be real camp fest. You know, you can cover it from this here. You can get under the stairs here and just kind of cover it. You can get up above this, this balcony up here is very, very horrible um, because, again, you can kind of cover all the doors. You can cover the main door and you can obviously cover this back door here going prone. You can cover that very, very well. So this whole area, again, is not really one that I would favour particularly for coming in. Again, this map is all about the flanking and, you know, again, this can be very difficult here because you can have tanks and vehicles and, you know, sort of uh, claymores on the doors, etc. People just kind of covering this, this open area. What I would tend to do if I was going to attack B would be similarly to what we did on the previous base, okay, which is going to be to kind of move up, stealth up, using the rocks for cover. Okay, when you get to this point, you obviously have an issue in that you have to cross this huge area of open ground. Now, if you did have a fast moving vehicle saved from the previous base, okay, you could use that to flank up quickly and, you know, get up behind those sheets for cover. If you don't have that, you're going to have to use, you know, you basically go on foot and dropping some smoke is going to help you to do that just to move across this area again you might want to drop some more just like that until you're in a kind of safe position once you get up to here okay you're safe or relatively safe anyway um, if you've got a recon unit with you then they're going to be able to drop a you know spawn point somewhere around here and something that i know you, you will kind of know the distance but if you look right here you can see look there's where the containers start you see the difference? That's open ground, that's the containers. You don't want to come through here and be like this, because you'll be coming into open ground, you could be coming into defenders, okay? You could have a guy just crossing the open ground. What you're going to want to do is run a little bit further. Again, you could look for this little bush here. You see how we come into this kind of nice, plain, sort of white, yellow open area? That's going to bring you behind these containers, so it's going to be a much more sort of safe entry point, okay? And then you can come up through here. You could have someone maybe covering here with an LMG, 
and then everyone else can kind of push through. You're going to want to move up to these containers here, being careful. Again, we're really sort of flanking around the back, okay? Often what I will do, you need to watch your left-hand side here again because you may have people camping. But what I will often do is I will come up to this window here, and the reason for that is that over here we have a very, very well, you know, it's, it's a very strong camp point for defending B. And we'll go have a look at that. So often what I'll do is take out anyone up there, okay? And then my next move is going to be to throw, again, you might want to shoot out this window, but you can, th you can throw it from here. You know, but basically you want to put a grenade out like that. And what that's going to do is it should land pretty much on B, yeah? And then you see that's going to destroy any C4 on the target. So then once that's destroyed, basically what you would do is throw the grenade, okay? And then move across here like this. And hopefully, again, making sure this is clear. Maybe your teammates will have helped you clear that area. Drop some smoke out on the floor. And then you go for the arm. Basically arm the target. Now, as I was saying, up here is a very dangerous camp point. Um, if you're a defender, it's a very good defending point. Um, but again, what you'll do is come up here and you see, basically, you can look across B here, you can cover that whole area, you can cover the doors coming in, but, you know, they're going to have a very difficult time. If you wanted to be horrible as well, you could go prone here. You could even move back a little bit, look, you see, and then that way, my, my little tactic from the window is not going to work. Most of the time, I find people are kind of standing around here, looking at it, okay? But if you come back a little bit into this room here like this, you could sit like this. If you had a sniper rifle or a four optic or a bipod or something like that, you know, if you had a G3 with a bipod and a six scope, you're going to be able to uh, see the whites of their eyes. And that's a very strong defending point for B. The only downside with it is that, you know, you're very, very, you're very open to people coming up these stairs. And again, it'd be very easy for someone to come up to here and just put a grenade through that window and uh, drop it down onto you or even just run up the stairs and just blow you away. Um, so yeah, that's the main one I would watch for. Most you, you can get all sorts of other people just kind of camping around like you would on any base. So just be aware of that. Um, be aware of that balcony. So let's get this one armed. Now again, if you've taken the B base here, um, the next one is going to be obviously A. So if you are coming straight from B to A, then you're going to want to watch for this building. This is the dangerous building and just covering the kind of general open area, watching out for snipers on the roofs as well. However, I'm going to assume that this has been a slightly difficult fight. And so what we're going to do is let this one blow. And we're going to go back to the other point. So off we go. Yeah, I'm going to assume that we had a very difficult fight there. Um, everyone got killed, taken out, and therefore we have to start back from the base again because often that will be the way it goes. Um, if you were literally just pushing onto the other target, that's pretty easy. Uh, and you do get a tank on this base. Right. Now again, A, it seems the most sensible thing to do, and most people will do this, is to kind of just push straight up onto A, like a head-on attack. I don't really like head-on attacks because they can be very high in ticket casualties and um, it's very easy to defend against a head-on attack unless you have the sort of full coordination of your whole team. What I will tend to do is kind of move up here and again you might want to drop some smoke like this just kind of covering where they might be looking and that will help you kind of move up successfully. Again you might want to then just put another piece of smoke like this just to cover you up to this point here. And then when it's safe to do so, moving across to the final point up here. And this is really where we're trying to get to, this whole area here. You can drop a nice little recon point like here. Again, nobody's gonna be spotting and looking over here. So you can kind of set up a little mini base here. Um, you could have mortar units, etc. I think you can go as far, yeah, you can go right over here, look. You could have a nice little mortar unit there. That's going to be, you know, good for suppression and smoke dropping onto A. So your squad, or squads if you've got a proper, you know, sort of clan game going on. This is a really excellent staging point for everyone to come to. Um, you can have, for example, an LMG unit set up about here. And they can cover this area here. They can cover people moving across here. And they'll be able to provide you with some good cover. There's two ways to really attack this. One is going to be obviously for you know a direct attack, so dropping smoke, putting fire down, and just really getting in there. One thing to be aware of as you come up to this point, 
they'll often be coming from here and up in these windows so as you go for a go straight on for it head on like that and try to arm it this way okay that's going to help you you know be defend it's going to help you defend against people shooting down on you because they obviously won't be able to get a line of sight on you but a better thing to do, um, or, or you know, if you have a split team, for example, if you've got two teams of two in your squad, okay, send two people to arm it, two people to clear this building. Really, what you're going to do is go straight in, okay, and just get in through the window. And you want to head upstairs, and you usually have somebody at this window right here, so get ready for them, and generally just kind of clear the whole room, make sure the ground floor is done. Um, up on the roof as well, you might have snipers and things, and this is going to be your access here. You might want to just put a little grenade up on the roof like that. And then obviously you can come out of here, you could have somebody covering this road. You could go upstairs and use these windows to cover the roads down here. And it should just be a case once you've secured the whole area of uh, arming up the final target. And that'll be the end of the round. But this can be a very difficult base. It really is... It really is a matter of just, you know, judging how they've been playing up to this point, okay? If they're being a very, very hard defending team, then you're going to want to sort of, you know, flank them and try and cut them in half, you know, divide the team up like that. If they've been being very open fight, then maybe speed and, you know, that's going to be more of the key point. If they've been sort of uh, fragmented all over the place, then a direct, fast attack is going to be the one you want to go for. So that's been my little analysis of uh, Operation Firestorm. I hope that's been helpful and uh, please leave any questions comments and also please if you could recommend the next rush map that you would like me to take a look at thanks for watching guys